So I think the thing that I worry about when it's just under the umbrella of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, because it has moderate legal strength, we have seen over the years in the 80s and the 90s, California, Arizona, and Massachusetts with their English only laws, many of which have been abolished or adjusted, but that created you know, significant erosion around the provision of bilingual education for multiple ethno-linguistic communities, including the Cantonese. Um, so erosion is hard to recover from. And then the more contemporary issues with the possible erosion of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and Lao as we know it is um, the reading bills that are being pushed forward and have tenets within them that uh, require retention if a student isn't re reading by third grade. And in some cases, English learners or multilingual students are included in this provision and do not qualify for an exemption. Um, and so we see how these particular bills, while not overtly say, stating English only, become sort of an abstracted strategy to um, exit kids quickly and to get them in, into gen ed quickly, or I say, get them into to, to the pool so they can do sink or swim more quickly. Um, and so those sorts of things um, are happening more presently. And then thirdly, I would say, um, when we think about civil rights, we have bilingual education converting itself into dual language education, which is a purposeful blending of English majority speakers um, speakers of the minoritized language and perhaps speakers of other minoritized languages that are commingled. But importantly, what we see throughout the nation is more and more dual language is meeting the demands of English majority students while crowding out the rights of multilingual students. And so um, this is referenced by many, um, many in the field as dual language gentrification. And so that is what we call sort of the tinkering, right? It's the creative erosion, but it becomes per pernicious. And because the Civil Rights Act has moderate le legal strength, um, I remain concerned about how far have we come in 50 years and what will the next 50 look like?